let's see whether I can drive my slides properly. Yes, I can. Okay. So I thought if we're going to just talk a little bit about uh, you know the community at the CNCF and, and some of the things that the TOC has had to kind of deal with, and in particular the scale issues that we're trying to deal with. But if we're going to talk about the CNCF, we have to just pause on what the CNCF is here to do. Uh, this is the screenshot of the homepage of the CNCF. It's about cloud native software. We could probably spend half an hour talking about exactly what that means. The definition is three paragraphs long. I think in terms of being a welcoming community, it has been brought to my attention just in the last couple of weeks how that description is actually quite off-putting for people. So something I'd like us to think about is how we can make that come up with a definition that's both accurate and not off-putting, you know, welcoming to people. And we're also about sustaining the ecosystem around us. This is about the project, it's about the users for those projects, it's about the vendor community that fund all of this. You know, we, we have a lot of different um, different subsets of our community and different um, sort of interests that we need to cater for. And we're trying to balance those interests such that it is good for the project and the end users and the vendors. So we have a charter. It has, uh, I, I've tried to sort of abbreviate the, the sections of the charter into the kind of key headings. And I think today I was just going to dwell on two of the salient points from that charter that really relate to what the TOC is trying to do. One is fast is better than slow. Another is that the CNCF should represent a strong technical identity, that we're very much about this software that we call cloud native. What does that mean and what does that uh, require from different projects in order to meet that identity? And it's not an easy thing to turn into a bunch of checkboxes. And I think that's one of the challenges for the TOC and the TOC community to internalize what this identity is and figure out how our projects can fit with that identity. We also have uh, this set of TOC principles really describing how the TOC operates within that charter. So how do we as a TOC community identify good projects? How do we work with those projects? How do we, uh, how do we foresee this, this landscape, this, this stack? Again, I'm not gonna dwell on all of the different bullet points here, but the thing that I did wanna highlight here is that we're looking for these high quality high velocity projects. So in particular, those first two words, high quality, it's not enough for a project to just be cloud native. We also have this sense of no kingmakers. I nearly highlighted that one as well. So we are trying to offer choice to end users, but we somehow have to figure out what that high quality aspect means. High velocity probably means that it's evolving fast, that it has lots of um, contribu contributors, it has lots of end users, that it's evolving towards its kind of product market fit, uh, you know, approaching that well and, and fast. As I say, the high quality bit is pretty hard to, to measure. If I kind of put those together, what the TOC community has to try to do, one of our main roles is assessing projects for whether or not they're high quality within this boundary of what cloud native means and what their strong technical identity means. Um, cloud native projects are known for it being scalable, being API driven, being dynamic. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for from this identity. But it's not a checkbox exercise. Particularly at what we call the incubation stage, there's this really significant amount of due diligence that the TOC engages in, reviewing the project documentation, trying the project out, interviewing, end users to understand their experiences, looking at the code, 
assessing the way the project governed and trying to make sure that it meets the CNCF's non-technical requirements as well, the things around open governance and neutrality. And we do get help from the CNCF staff help us with some of that, but in the end, the TOC is the group that gets asked to make these judgments. There's a lot of work here. This is, you know, it's non-trivial to assess these projects. Which leads us to the, the issue of scale and the issue of how in such a successful foundation we're, we're growing, we, the number of projects is growing. We know we still have gaps in the landscape, but we do have this increasing number of projects. We're at almost 50 projects in the CNCF now. And you can see by the graph that the, the number that have graduated has been growing. The number that's in incubation has been relatively stable, but that says something about sandbox projects moving up into incubation and incubation projects moving up into graduation. Pretty linear growth over the past couple of years. But it's not linear in terms of applications. I didn't go back into history to look at all the applications in the past, but we have had this really significant uh, interest in the CNCF. There are a lot of projects out there that want to be part of the foundation because it's successful and they want to be, um, you know, they have great offerings and they want to be part of this stack that we're, you know, or the building blocks of a stack that end users can assemble. So that's, if we wanted to try and assess all of those projects at incubation level, that would be a large, large, large amount of work. And in addition to the sandbox, we have projects increasingly wanting to move up between sandbox and incubation. So right now there's um, not quite a half, but I think about 40% of um, the, the number of projects that want to be assessed is about 40% of the total number of projects on the sort of to-do list. So it's a lot of stuff out there looking to be assessed in one way or another. And that is really hard to reconcile with this uh, principle of fast is better than slow. So um, I guess a bit over a year ago, well, we had the Technical Oversight Committee as one of the kind of three pillars of the CNCF, we added in the SIGs. And the SIGs have been hugely useful, really useful resource of having this amazing group of people who have much more in-depth knowledge of certain areas than some of us do on the TOC. Lots of us have individual focuses on particular areas, um, but we can broaden out beyond our 11 members to these amazing people on the SIGs to try and help us with this and try and help us cope with uh, this backlog that's been building up of assessments. And more people, it, it gives us this more expertise, it gives us more time. I think this is worth mentioning in terms of community. Most of us are doing these roles in the TOC, this is certainly true, and I think across the SIGs, I think across and the you know, Kubernetes SIGs, I think across a lot of projects, people are paid, I think most contributors are probably being paid by an organization to do a job, but they're not necessarily being given a huge amount of time to work on CNCF specific things. A lot of us have you know, full-time jobs doing software engineering and um, we're working around that. So being able to recruit time from a bigger pool is hugely valuable. But it also means that we have increased divergence of um, opinions. You know, what do we mean by high quality? What do we mean by cloud native? How do we even draw the kind of bars? What, what bars should we be drawing? And the underlying problem that we have to face up to is that it can be more confusing for projects. This is something that I think you know, we're recognizing there is a balance here between leveraging all this amazing expertise, but also just it being more confusion for, for the project and the increasing number of projects out there. 
So this is one of the reasons why in the CNCF we are simplifying or we're experimenting with simplifying the sandbox process. And I think we're trying to do this by reducing significantly the amount of assessment that we'll do at the sandbox stage. We might still be saying if, they, if we don't think they're like a fit for cloud native, you know, this isn't going to be a catch all for every single open source project. We want to be able to uh, have some feel that it is a cloud native project, but we're not going to give any guarantees to end users. We never have given guarantees to end users about sandbox projects, but it's always been very confusing. We've had sandbox projects leveraging the CNCF name to uh, promote their projects. That's one of the reasons why it's been so popular. Not necessarily good for those end users who are a really important constituency of our community. So we're going to try really hard with this evolving sandbox process to clarify to end users that there is no due diligence that's been done on these projects that we believe they're cloud native but we're really not assessing them in any further way um, this is very much work in progress we'll have to see how this evolves i think it's potentially going to be painful every process change is a bit painful but I hope that it's going to uh, enable us to uh, improve the scale with which we operate on that one. So I just wanted to end with the fact that although we do have some growing pains around dealing with these assessments and dealing with the, um, the sandbox process in particular, from the this year's maintainer survey, the vast majority of project maintainers are really happy with the service that they're getting from the CNCF and that they would recommend the CNCF to other projects. We hear quite a lot in the TOC about the projects that are frustrated with how long it can take to get through assessments or projects that have applied and maybe not had a good answer of why they've been not accepted, We're trying to improve those elements. We hear a lot about that and it, it worries us. I always want to close on the fact that although there are flaws and lots of things we can learn, DNCF is doing a lot of good things for a lot of projects and making those projects available and um, raising the awareness of them to a lot of end users. So I think overall as a community we are doing good things and uh, with that I will wrap up there and uh, <laughs> Hope it makes sense. <laughs> well, well, thank you, and um, and and I I want to reiterate that um, DNCF is doing more than a few good things. They're doing a lot of great things, and um, we really appreciate all the work that you've put into it, and all of the members of the TOC have too. And I I know um, from experience, having you know dr tried to drive things through, some of them getting in, some of them not. That it's you know it's it's a process, it's an evolving process. And I think that's um, the thing that um, that I want to stress too, is that this today is really talking about how the lessons that we've learned along the way and what I, I think is um, wonderful about the CNCF is your um, ability to understand when things are going awry and needing to change processes and adapt to the environment. Um, the sandbox example is a very good example. Um, from my perspective, uh, it's probably the right move. It's very hard to remove the um, the branding of, of CNCF um, as if it's a blessing on a sandbox. So that's going to be tactically a hard thing to do um, because, and that's really one of the things that does it. One of the conversations, and I'm gonna unmute or just so we have a few minutes to um, wrap up that Aloise and Aaron and your, your fellow AMA and Brian, um, what we were talking about a little bit um, before you came in was um, from a community development process. A lot of people managed to make it through the CNCF incubation, get incubation and sandbox, um, and they think this is an instant um, karma thing. They're all of a sudden going to get all of this wonderful new um, 
new information, um, new community members, new um, contributors, new engineers working on their project, and that much sometimes to their shock and you know surprise, they don't get that. Um, so the TOC is about vetting and and doing this, but the component that seems to me to be missing is the coaching on how to develop communities once you're you know once you're in the door. And I wonder if you can address that just a tiny bit here, you know, what the CNCF's perspective is on whose responsibility it is to do the community development once it's gone on. Yeah, and we recently, I'm going to say maybe a couple of months ago, uh, have a SIG called um, Contributor Strategy. And a lot of that is about helping projects learn about that kind of community building aspect. Um, the people behind it include um, uh, Paris, who had such a huge amount of experience of building community around Kubernetes. And for a while we've been saying, you know, how can we leverage, you know, the, the amazing things that the, the Kubernetes community did in terms of recruiting people and there, I think it's, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people they have, who have contributed to Kubernetes. They, they've been so successful in that onboarding of contributors. I mean, like, we have to be able to learn some of that goodness for other projects. So super excitingly, when uh, Paris suggested, hey, do you think we could like maybe put mm -hmm. something together to share some of this experience? Yes, yes, that would be wonderful. So, um, uh, it, you know, it's it's still relatively early days, but I, I'm extremely uh, bullish that that is going to be a, a game changer, really, for a lot of projects who who want to learn how to onboard contributors. Uh, sometimes projects don't necessarily want to. That's a whole other question. But where they do, I think that SIG resources from CNCF staff, just recognizing that you know it's all well and good us talking about things like neutral governance but people need to be able to recruit maintainers so how do they do that what's the what's the process for making your project seem welcoming and uh, exciting we're going to try and improve that improve the, the education process for that brian or aaron or alois before i pipe in again um is there anything you'd like to, to add to that i Pause for me. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. So everything that Liz says, and uh, I mean, I'll just chime in. And Diane knows this. Uh, there is lots of people from lots of places with lots of priorities and lots of constraints, and we need to realize that that it does take all types to build this community that we're trying to build. And sometimes, from your point of view, this is the best thing and the most right thing ever doesn't fit you know, where the TOC is or where the SIG is or where the community is. And it, it's difficult and frustrating. Uh, but I mean, I watch what Liz is doing and, and we just need to first have a process and then follow that process. And I think over time, it'll, it'll smooth itself out because right now it is, it is difficult. And, and I can see why people would look the other ways or thinking that something's negative is going on. So I just want people to keep that in mind. Louise, did you have yeah. something to add there? Yeah, that's another what I always saw this project, and I've been in my role on both sides here. But I mean, to be to be to be totally blunt here, if, even if we want to get into the CNCF, the process might be taking a bit longer as the CNCF is growing and has to to adjust. It it shouldn't really hold your project back. You should still be working on your project, building on community, working with your end users, and Way that Liz mentioned, like a contributor strategy meeting. So it's a CNCF calendar. It's a public meeting. So even and this might be like a public secret now. Even if you're not a CNCF project, you can still join that meeting if you're part of the CNCF and learn from people there. And I just see people so much clinging like to this badge of honor from the CNCF that they're a CNCF project, and then they start working. And no, it helps you in certain situations. Like for example, if the companies like in this round wanted to work on something together and wanted to build a project, it would be incredibly hard for us to do this. But still, first, we would need to agree on a common agenda and so forth, and then the CNCF blessing might be the icing on the cake. And 
So, so when projects come in there, I think what we can, it's great to have computer strategy there. What we sometimes just try to do as well as the thick chair is we try to connect them to other people that should be. Okay, there's this other project. You might, with them, you might talk about topics with them and it's received in different ways. So some say, well, never thought about this. Thank you for that. That's what we're here for. And others want you to, to this point before, want to be rather left alone, but then you're not leveraging that community that you want to get into. And I think that's what you very quickly see also for people submitting projects. I mean, we as the sick chairs are also not stupid. Like we understand intentions. Yeah. And we obviously see that uh, like having the, the um, the CNCF patch helps, but what even more helps you if people like your project, if they engage with you, and if they discuss technical topics and see that you're a great solution. And that beyond everything should be your uh, foremost goals when you're in interacting there. So Aaron, would you like the almost last word? Huh. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of talk around intentions and motivations, and I, I, I sincerely do think that the community of people, both TOC chairs and SIG chairs and everyone involved has the best intentions. Um, they really believe in the community. They believe in open source. And I think, you know, that's the perfect combination of, of how we move stuff forward. And in addition to the community building, I think it's super important to have all these people together singing the same song, debating things openly. Um, it, it, I think it's it's just great to be able to have a platform to do that in. Um, and for me, I think I think the SIGs has has really helped cultivate that. So, so I'll I'll take the last word. Um, and and Brian Brian actually said some said, used the phrase end user. And uh, one thing that I I would I would like to see more of. Um, and having Paris start up the contributors uh, strategy SIG is a great thing but um, a recognition that community is, is more than contributors. It is the end user community. It is all the people who are integrating, all the people who are leveraging your technology or your project. And so a more expansive view of what community is and, and better coaching for these incoming projects or ancillary projects that are touching on the cloud native, uh, I think is something that um, we can we can all do better, and you know that hopefully as we move forward with contributor strategy, we expand it to be more um, ecosystem wide in the personas that they're pursuing to contribute, um, because there's there's a lot of I think um, legacy around the word contributor, um, and along with meritocracy and all of the other good open source words we all grew up on, um, but to really open up our uh, our understanding of what community is. Um, uh, and, and CNCF has done an amazing job getting an end user community um, uh, forum set up um, for CNCF to get the voices heard from the people who are using the technologies. But I think we can, you know, as always, always do better. And we're looking forward to, to collaborating with you guys all on that. So um, not that's not a critique, that's a, an offer. To, um, to expand um, the horizons, I think, from that. And thank you, Liz, for, for figuring out the time zones um, and for bringing um, the TOC clarity there that, um, that I think everybody is looking for and, and continue to evolve the processes and the people that are involved in the TOC. We know it's a lot of work and we really appreciate the effort. Thank you very much for having me. Apologies again for my lateness. And uh, thank you to, you know, all of the SIG chairs, whether here on this call or, you know, possibly looking later and the other SIG contributors, because we really appreciate your help.